How to Overcome Self-Limiting Beliefs and Achieve Success. If you know my backstory, even if you don't, let me just tell you, I was raised being told all sorts of things that programmed self-limiting beliefs into this head of mine, and it was keeping me small, it was keeping me held back, I wasn't achieving even anywhere close to my potential, but I have overcome them. And now I have success all over the place, and I want that for you as well. And it's pretty easy. Today I'm going to teach you my four-step process to overcome self-limiting beliefs so that you can have a taste of that sweet, sweet success. Be right back. Guild Coaching. More success, less stress. Today I'm giving you my foolproof four-step plan to overcome self-limiting beliefs. Well, it's foolproof only if you do it. I promise if you will do this, it works. And how do I know? Because I have spent much of my lifetime overcoming a whole bunch of self-limiting programming that came from my birth family, from my mom, from my dad, from my sisters, um, from people around me while I was growing up. Uh, negative beliefs about money, you know, other people, uh, that, that kind of thing comes easy to other people, but not me. Um, you know, why don't I have what they have to, oh, you're not smart enough to do this, that, or the other, all sorts of self-limiting beliefs. But the only limits that you have in your life when it comes to your own success are up here. So if we can reprogram those, then you can have a whole lot of success. So get a pen, get some paper and take notes because when you take notes, it helps solidify your learning. And before we get started, go ahead and check and see if you're a subscriber here because we're dropping videos like this all the time for you. If you're not a subscriber, we would love to have you and our family of subscribers. So click the subscribe button and the little bell so that you get notifications the next time we drop a video like this. But for now, on with this video. Okay, step number one, you have to identify your self-limiting beliefs. What actually are they? You can't really get rid of something that you don't know is there or that you don't recognize is there. So how do you feel about the world in general, overall? Sit down with that pen and paper that I just told you to use to take notes, sit down and ask yourself, you know, how do I feel about the world? Is the world against me? Is the world for me? Is everything always working out for me? Are things never working out for me? You know, how do you feel about the world and about life in general? The second part that you need to identify is how do I feel about other people? Your trust of them, your loyalty toward them, your, how do your past experiences and your beliefs shape the way that you interact with others? Number three in this first step is how do you, how do you um, feel? What are your beliefs? Identify your beliefs about yourself. Do you believe that you have limits in certain areas and are they true? I told you a little while ago, my, my birth family, my family of origin loved me, but gave me a bunch of negative self-limiting beliefs and I believed I wasn't smart enough to do a lot of things. And then one day I realized, wait, I am smart enough. And then I did a bunch of things just to prove that I was smart enough. I was proving it to me. Get over those self-limiting beliefs and then you can do it and say, look, look what I just did. And then the last area of this identification, step one, is identify any of your thoughts of entitlement. If you have any beliefs of entitlement, like you're better than somebody else, or you're owed more than somebody else, or somebody else has something, so you're owed it as well, or your life has been very, very hard, so the world owes you something, kick that out of your thought processes. You are no more special than I am. I'm special and you're special, but you're no more special than I am or any other person who you see. You're no more special than the richest person in the world or the poorest person in the world. We are all equal, everybody. Everybody is equal. So get rid of your thoughts of entitlement, get rid of those because those are huge in holding you back. Okay, step number two, you've got to take responsibility. This is on you. It's not on anybody else. The identification process really helps you to go through and take control. You know, how do I feel about the world? How do I feel about other people? How do I feel about myself? How do I feel about what I'm owed? And so just doing that, especially that fourth part in identification, helps you to start to take responsibility. 
you take responsibility for those beliefs that are in your head. I've said a couple times now, my family gave me beliefs. Families do. Families give you beliefs. People who raise you give you beliefs. Teachers, religious uh, uh, officials, all sorts of different belief givers are out there in your life, but now they're in here and you had to take it and accept it. So take responsibility for the fact that it exists up there. There's, you're not in a situation where there's nothing that you can do about it. You can do everything about it. So do something about it. Identify and then just take responsibility for them. Number three, this one's hard because you are programmed to crave it. You need to release certainty. Another way of saying it is you need to release your desire for stability and, and security in a certain way. So let me explain. The desire for certainty keeps us small because it keeps you in that relationship where you're not treated well. Well, what if somebody else won't love me? What if I won't do well on my own? Well, what if you desire the stability or the certainty or the predictability of that situation more than you are willing to explore what you could have without it. Our brains want stability. Our brains crave comfort zones because comfort zones, according to our subconscious brains, bring um, safety and stability. Safety because if it's in our comfort zone, then it's familiar to us and we've already survived with that element there. So why not keep surviving with that element there? Not necessarily the best thing, especially if you're in an abusive relationship, if you're in a job that just leaves you feeling empty and just dead inside at the end, our craving certainty, well, what am I gonna do without a paycheck? What am I gonna do without a paycheck? The, the sun keeps on rising and setting and, and you're a brilliant person. You can create wealth in your life without that steady, job paycheck or with a different steady job paycheck but our desire for certainty keeps us small in that way so let go of it because that desire for certainty and appeasing that desire for certainty like giving into it okay well I'll just stay in this rotten relationship because I'd rather be in a rotten relationship than no relationship at all or re replace relationship with job or whatever the uncomfortable um, or small, smaller than you deserve uh, situation is that you're in, those giving into the certainty desire in those ways is what is going to give you regrets tomorrow. So when you're much older than you are now and you're looking back at your life, your desire for certainty is going to be the number one culprit for the bulk of your regrets. So right now, just learn to let go of the desire for certainty and live in a little bit of a limbo. It's gonna be uncomfortable, but it's gonna push you outside your comfort zone. And if you've been with me for a while, you know that I call the comfort zone the failure zone. The only place we can grow is outside of it. Okay, step number four, you've got to redesign your self-talk. I've got a whole playlist on here with meditation sessions and affirmations. Pick one of those affirmation sessions. It's 10 minutes long. 10 minutes is 1% of your day and you can invest 1% to make the other 99% better. Redesign your self-talk. Everything's always working out for me. That's one of my favorite affirmations. I think I have, I have a much longer recording of that if you just wanna leave it in the background while you're working, while you're working around the house, while you're doing your errands, whatever you're doing, everything's always working out for me. And right now you might be like, but everything's not always working out for me. Well, it depends on how you look at it because you're still here. You're with me. We are on this spinning earth together. And I think that that's saying something. I think that that means that everything has worked out to put you in the right place at the right time to hear this right message for you. If this video has been of help to you, give me a thumbs up. And again, if you didn't already, when I asked you before, subscribe because we're dropping videos like this all the time to help you live a happier and more successful life. I'll see you next time.